space engine. I thought it was like Operation Fortitude or Operation Bodyguard. So it's like, okay, please don't bother me with your sci-fi stories. Space opera. The same reason that I don't go into a Scientology center and spend all my time thinking about demon. I'm not going to spend all my time worried about space opera. And what changed? Meeting an enormous number of very sober, very grown-up people who seem to... What's going on? I can't hear this. Oh, I got that. alter and believe that this is real. I have met an enormous who had personal first-hand sober people who had crazy first-hand encounters. I don't understand how they're doing this as actors. Very often it's unwanted, it ruins their lives. It's sad. You know, I ended up in San Marino uh, at Lou Elizondo's invitation, then Lou couldn't come, so I ended up speaking in Lou's place with a UFO. It's crazy. But I met so many people who were just like, Eric, you know, let me explain my experience. You know, I'm just not prepared for these highly detailed stories that have so much similarity one to the next. You know, like the Skinwalker Ranch thing on uh, the History Channel? It look, looks incredibly junky, put out by Prometheus Entertainment. I know Brandon Bugle, the owner of the ranch. And I know Eric Bard, we keep talking via phone. Eric Bard is like almost the only other person who has some idea of what differential forms are, the tensor analysis is. He's a sober, normal human being sitting out there on a ranch trying to figure out what the hell he's looking at. I don't think he's lying. You know, Sam Harris and I are both saying that there's a disclosure plan and it's got there's big updates and we need you to communicate this news to the world. There's disclosure about a specific technology. About something. I mean, more or less the way this works. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Something's huge. But we're going to fly out to Colorado Springs. We're going to show you some stuff. Okay. I'm on standby. Well, my process I'm very open minded very strong filter before all Yeah, that's true. That's real. That's real. Why do you need to find it? You don't. So, I was open to this. Sam was open to this. And it's Lucy in the football. Every day. When, am I, when am I headed out to Colorado? Well, you're going to be met by a car and you're going to be blindfolded and you won't know where you are. And like, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Next week, next week, we got, oh no, something's come up on the hill. And it's going to be crazy. We're going to be talking to some very big people. I can't talk to you right now. So that's been my real life right now. And, and it's always pushed out. So apparently Weinstein has been in continuous contact with someone for the past three years who claims that at any moment, Weinstein is going to be flown to Colorado Springs to be shown presumably actual evidence of extraterrestrials. Any moment now. His bags are packed, ready to go. Oh, sorry, this is a very weak point to like for her to focus on and stuff. And I, I just want to point out that this is, you know, she she takes a lot of time calling him out. And this, you know, idea of the intellectual dark web and um, the, the idea that you know to call out intellectuals, you have to really get into nitty gritty on the intellectual stuff, which this isn't the intellectual stuff. This is the issue of the evidence for alien UFOs and you know he said he, he did, in the very clearly she asked all these questions and, and you know it's like obviously you didn't watch the whole interview with Eric Weinstein because if you did um you would have noticed that you know he, he addressed this at some point you know the first start of the video gets off to the rock and start and that's kind of uh, to get into it, you want to get into it, because he, 
Joe Rogan asked him about Bob Lazar and Weinstein deflects a little bit on the whole question. I'm not sure if it's because he hasn't really done the thorough research on Bob Lazar. If anyone um, wants to talk to someone who has, so Solar Marshall has been uh, one of my leads on that case. He introduced me to John Muir and a number of other people who are very uh, high up and close to the original Bob Lazar case, which has led us to some really interesting inside sources of information on, on a lot of uh, the network that's still taking up in the mainstream media and really reflecting a lot of the scientists away from this topic, um, which I can talk about. Eric talks a little bit about, it, about this when he gets into um, the military research on anti-gravity, people are surprised when you talk about anti-gravity. It's like a taboo topic. It's ridiculous. And of course, you know, what do we mean by anti-gravity is, is an issue of scientific and physical debate and definitions that, that we really, we call it propellantless propulsion or alternative propulsion. Um, and I've worked with, um, as people who are new to this channel, be aware um, altpropulsion.com you can go to altpropulsion.com I've hosted this since the very start I was part of the team that you know, we thought about this during the early part of COVID when the Estes Park Propulsion Conference hosted by um, the uh, what's his name Estes Park Conference anyway um, it, it was, was uh, held on Zoom for the first time in the, because of COVID. And so we got the idea from Estes Park to host the, um, the Zoom conference on, um, you know, to host a conference on propulsion on Zoom. And uh, let's see, this is, this is, uh, Hal Fern, yeah, Hal Fern is one of the physicists who, who worked with this, but uh, the guy who put it all on is, um, what is his name? I'm gonna die when I when I when it hits me. Someone out there knows. Let's see. I'll I'll do a quiz for the the audience to see how much you guys know. If you can name the person who puts on the propulsion conference at Estes Park, because then you're really shows that you're into propulsion science and, and do your research and homework on propulsion. Um, and science and technology, um, which I do. I just, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on um, his name. Woodward. Woodward. Come on, James Woodward. That's it. I thought of, I thought of it a second before you posted it, Charlie. So yeah, Charlie yeah, definitely does his research and his homework on, uh, on propulsion science. So um, definitely um, look into the number of people and uh, the events, the past events that we've done here and the number of propulsion scientists that we've, you know, tracked out of the woodwork just by going through the literature and doing the actual research and actually went and interviewed these people and brought them on the channel and, and I, I helped you know, part of this. Um, you know, we, we went and investigated every single claim of, uh, of, a, of an effect or um, propulsion, propellantless propulsion um, and investigated it. And we also have other independent laboratories replicating or attempting replications of many of this technology. So this is an anti-gravity community. And we've, um, we've attracted DARPA and MIT and uh, many other um, top institutions with the, with the research and people that we've assembled and put together. Of course, there's a number of people that have refused and not come to APEC and, and uh, you know, have stayed out of the line. Like Woodward, I don't think he, he's actually, you know, he doesn't need APEC. Woodward's got his own conference and he's in his own community and, and he, and people, um, people, I, I definitely, encourage people to go and uh, look into these other people doing these other propulsion conferences because we're not the only ones and um, you know Eric Weinstein's not the only scientist and mathematician who is, you know hasn't just totally given up on the idea that uh, of something beyond rockets and something beyond propellant um, propellant based fuels 
uh, to get us to the stars. And he talks a lot about this, um, you know, the military research into anti-gravity. And, you know, it's interesting that he talks about this uh, Ed Witten thing, and I don't, I'm not sure where he got that information from. You know, I've been researching a lot of this stuff, and then I, I came along and, and um, I've been talking about, you know, Wheeler and, and, and Do It and, the, and um, the work, the, the theoretical work that Wheeler and Do It were doing, the metallurgy work that Wheeler was doing, and how it might have related to UFO metal. Um, some, a lot of things that, you know, Eric Weinstein didn't get into, like, get from bit. Um, John Archibald Wheeler was this metallurgist and quantum theorist back, you know, and relativist, but relativist, um, also trying to unify rel, uh, general relativity with quantum field theory back in the 50s and the 60s, even uh, in the 70s. I mean, he died in 2008, and I, I, he worked pretty solid up until his 90s um, on all this stuff. But he was finding Richard Feynman's theoretical advisor. Um, yeah, another interesting thing I wanted to point out was, uh, you know, Scott Adams did a um, a little delve into UFOs, and of course he found the Bob Lazar stuff. Uh, did a short invest, you know, it kept he watched he watched Jeremy Corbell's film. He said it kept him up at night, and then he started googling some stuff, and and um, he makes a bad comment though, right at you know 20 minute mark. If you go go here, and he says that. Oh, who would hire a 20-year-old to be part of some top secret program? You know, when is that? <laughs> he kind of thumbs his nose at it. He talks about Einstein, but he's obviously not aware of the story of, of, of Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman was recruited out of Princeton graduate school program in 1943 by Robert Oppenheimer, who um, was looking for a lot of qualified, you know, really advanced students. And Feynman was recognized for his genius and um, was recruited out there being born in 1918 that would make him 25 at the time of his recruitment into the most top secret physics research program that was going on in the world at the time which was the yeah the Manhattan Project 1943 so yeah there you have it uh, they do in fact hire 25 year olds who show you know high aptitude and they usually recruit them out of grad school, you know, during grad school, out of these top universities. Yes, um, this is a trend that we, we see in a lot of other cases as well. Um, there's, you know, there's a number of secret societies and stuff that tap people out of the, their, their graduate year of uh, school and, and other stuff as well so that that transition period between uh, graduating undergrad and, and graduate school first year graduate school is, is uh, a good way to spot talent uh, and you know they say you know say that our universities produce you know 174 of these people every year that need to be watched well um, we have to then come up with ways to identify and, um, you know, track those types of people. And, and that's, you know, that's just a general part of what they would do. Um, we've seen what they, what they do when you look at the global surveillance documents that were leaked by Edward Snowden, and, and, and you really studied the uh, network architecture of the data collection uh, servers and, and systems that they have, and, you know, the you know, creating a timeline of everything you've ever posted on Facebook, whether you were deleted or not, and it's backed up somewhere on, on some NSA drive and, and, and all those weird things. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's pretty nuts. So yeah, just, just be careful what you post and, uh, and what you get into. And you know, definitely do your research and your homework before you, you know, say things like, oh, they don't hire 20 year olds. Um, you know, even 30-year-olds. Well, 30, a 39-year-old ran the program. His name was J. Robert Oppenheimer. Born in 1904. That would make him 39 in 1943. So, um, 
he was the director and the, the lead the, the lead the bandwagon leader of the of the whole top secret physics program for the Manhattan Project. So he was 39 and, and Feynman was 25. Uh, so that's you know important stuff to look up. Um, the important thing is that Lazar claimed that he his position was the senior staff physicist. And you will find the interview that explains that. Senior staff physicist. So you don't get to be a senior staff physicist without an extensive curriculum detail, and you don't get that when you're 25, you're in your 20s. You don't get that when you're in your 30s, and you're really well published. So a lot of you know, physicists and mathematicians do a lot of their best work in their 20s, actually. Um, so, yeah, 1943 uh, also, you know, people were a lot more mature than they are now. We don't have fully grown. Um, men, you know, still acting like children. Um, so yeah, let's talk more about this whole thing because Weinstein was on this podcast with Joe Rogan and um, definitely encourage people to go and listen to the whole thing. He starts asking him about Bob Lazar and then, you know, Weinstein kind of side rails. He doesn't really answer and get into the Bob Lazar thing. Um, and I don't, really want to get into the Bob Lazar thing. I think the whole Bob Lazar story cannot be told without one key person in the, in the whole Bob Lazar picture, and that's Gene Huff. And um, I've been trying to get an interview with Gene Huff for, for years now, and um, Corbell's never interviewed him. It would be amazing if he, he did, or, uh, but um, yeah, I'd love to uh, get the real Bob Lazar story out, and, and I think that that guy's the key to it. But anyways, um, Enough with the with Bob Lazar. Let's talk the real physics. At um, you know, I don't I, I don't want to talk about any of the the socio political stuff either that he gets into after that that he kind of deflects to and, and goes on this tangent with. Uh, it comes back around forty four minutes. So go to the forty four minute work. This is a four hour uh, long podcast discussion. So there's a lot of stuff covered here. If you go back to forty four minutes, he gets into specifically the stuff on. Um, So I have this all mixed up. So he gets into two people. So the, the two people is the um, is the witness. That's the father son team, and then the other team is 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 the husband wife team, which is um, Bryce and Cecil Dewitt. And Bryce and Cecil Dewitt, he doesn't really go into the deep connection that they had with John Archibald Wheeler, uh, but he goes into the gravity conference, the secret gravity conference.
Yeah, boy. See you, dude.